A warm welcome outside there to our next webinar here at uh, JFT Brokers. Um, yeah, my name, as always, for those kind of webinars, uh, Stefan Friedrichowski. And uh, of course, especially in the English one, you know, you just can call me Stefan. Even if you get in contact with me, um, you see already my email address. No problem. Just uh, do not hesitate and uh, write an email to um, the shown email address. Yeah. So that uh, already said, a warm welcome, by the way, in the name of JFD as well. <clears throat> Today, we have the 26th of July, 2000 and um, what do we have? 18. Yeah, and um, yeah, today was uh, EZB uh, interest rate decision. <clears throat> Most of you will know. I not, because I have been surprised, and you know that uh, I'm not really directly related to to news and or even news trading. Um, always the same question: Do I stop my expert advisors um, during such events? And the clear answer is, as always, no. Um, as today, but I realized later that there has been at least something, but nothing major, as we all see in the charts. Um, but we have that kind of event every two months, so it's always not a real surprise. Okay, today's topic is pullback trading strategies. Um, the one or the other might know what pullback trading means, or therefore we we will introduce that, uh, of course, in much more detail. And the one or other might remember that we have done something similar already um, when we talk about a real uh, stock trading. And indeed, you're right. Um, it's quite similar what we do today, but today we will do it on Forex, even in principle, that kind of strategy is um, quite good on indices as well. And uh, later in the webinar, I will show um, yeah, um, um, yeah, just an account uh, uh, which is trading the same strategy on indices. The email address, once again, um, you might need, uh, if you want, uh, later I will show a couple of Excel sheets. And if you want to have access to those, just drop me an email and I will make sure that you get all the Excel sheets uh, we show here. Oh, now I realize that I forgot to um, already to, to, to show up the, the PDF document. Um, maybe I can do it as we speak. Um, so that we can have those as well. So let me try to do it. <clears throat> well, but you have to know, it's always difficult to, uh, here to speak and <clears throat> do the right um, mouse clicks uh, as I speak here. Um, but let's do it. So um, I show the uh, other slide um, in a second here. Um, we talk about trading strategies and uh, therefore I have to to show up on the risk disclaimer, you know that whenever it comes uh, to your own trading activities, um, of course, you do those trading activities on your own. And you know that I have to say that uh, within every webinar. But anyhow, I think it's uh, self-explaining. And now we have um, the PDF document of today's uh, slides already uploaded. So you can download those in the GoToWebinar control panel. A little bit more in detail what we do um, and the following. So we really start with pullback strategies from a definition point of view. And we will do it a little bit um, untypically. We will really do it in, in a chart um, later than that we all know what we are really talking about here. Uh, <clears throat> when I mean um, pullback trading strategies and later you will see um, that I even go a step further, it's not only trading pullback, it's a combination of pullback and even um, so-called grid approach. Grid approach means that we not only work with one trade, we even go for uh, trade sequences and uh, how to deal with that even in Excel, <clears throat> we will discuss um, uh, as well, yeah. So it's, Two kind of strategies we combine here, and um, that's um, quite a um, good tool to go for such uh, strategies in, in general. 
Of course, we do it in Excel here once again, although you know that finally when it comes to <clears throat> those strategies, uh, I, I really um, trade. I have uh, one additional step that's uh, so-called C programming um, to get a little, a little bit more robust and to have that walk forward methodology. But I will show the results for those um, pullback trading strategies here within the webinar. And it now it's, I think, the fourth time in a row, more or less, that finally I have as a last topic uh, and now as a portfolio because we have a good approach, a trading strategy, and a trading approach called here pullback. And yeah, we don't have to stick to one underlying. Um, why not going for couples of underlyings, really um, nearly everything you can trade and combine all those strategies into one. That's uh, diversification um, on the one hand. Um, and finally, what we need for, for really good portfolios is uh, diversification of underlyings and strategies. But for me personally, it's always one strategy trading couple of underlyings and that is finally what I call one strategy or one trading account because I always separate um, the strategies on different accounts. But what do I mean with, um, with um, pullback? And pullback strategies in uh, general, you may even come from a more tech technical analysis point of view and you know when it comes to technical analysis or what uh, in the German language we sometimes have a uh, second wording that is called market um, market technique I don't know exactly uh, whether there's a good English translation for that but what I mean here is if you think about a typical upwards trend um, and that is characterized by higher highs and higher lows and you may go if you go to a textbook then you will see okay a very good zigzag line going upwards that's a theory <laughs> and um, then you call um, the increasing values if it's really an overall uh, increasing trend an upwards trend then you call that, that progression and uh, always the correction phase you call a regression. And now when we talk about pullback strategies, you might call that regression phase. So when it goes down in an overall upwards trend, you might call that already a pullback because yeah, price constantly goes up, but now for a certain time, it does a correction to the south and that you may call pullback. But in a little bit more general, you can even say, okay, even um, a return after a breakout, think about um, price is flat, nothing happens uh, all the time. And then all of a sudden we have a breakout, let's say to the south. And in a lot of cases, on a, a little bit longer period of time, price comes back exactly to um, uh, where it starts. So, and that is a pullback as well. But let, let's have a look in, into the chart um, because then it might be a little bit more obvious. So let's go for a chart, um, any chart we want. Let uh, I have no idea uh, which chart I should choose. Um, let's go for Australian dollar. Um, yeah, let's go for this one here. Okay. And later, you will see that we do everything on D1. So I switch to D1 for um, the Australian dollar, US dollar here as well. And let me zoom in a little bit. Then it might become quite obvious what in general pullback trading strategies mean. In this case, you see, okay, we have a downtrend, no question. So price overall within, within the last half year, um, went south. Um, okay, that's obvious. And even what I called, um, um, in this case, I need um, lower highs and lower lows is more or less confirmed looking to that um, period of time here. So you see we have a new low here, then a high, which is lower than the previous one, and so on and so forth. 
people who do technical, technical analysis sometimes forget okay there are details which look a little bit not perfect and for example look for here where my, my cursor is right now in this case the new low is not lower than the previous low um, so but anyhow um, we see a very good downside trend overall pullback now means okay we start here going south and then we have a sequence of candles going up so in this overall south movement this phase here is called regression and that is meant with a pullback phase which we have right now here so ideally we would trade in that sequence here short i agree <laughs> and ideally we would open trades for example like here or here or even here so that would be a good point in time to start those short trends because immediately afterwards we go really good south as always if i just talk about history talking about one half a year history um, looking to that chart everything might be obvious or clear or how to call that um, and you know uh, the detail is always uh, later when it comes to real trading but that is a principle of pullback strategies good but we will go a step further um, let me step back to my slides so we go even a step further because we want to go for grid pullback strategies and grid trading you might have heard um, this one as well uh, and may maybe you have heard it's dangerous um, grid trading or grid strategies are well described by equidistant trade openings okay what does it mean equidistant trade openings it means let's talk about DAX for example um, the DAX is at 12,000 and you mm, may put a buy limit order at 11,900 and the second one at 11,800 and the third one at 11,700 you see what I mean and we go in a distance of 100 points and we place our limit orders and in this case equidistant uh, which is not necessarily it must be equidistant but um, I will describe it that way in most cases strategies like that work quite well um, but a lot of strategies like that do not have a stop loss so that's nothing for us later you will see but um, let's go in detail in the next slide so what we do is we work with buy and sell limit orders on the base of the open of a candle and what we do additionally is that we use an EMA as an overall trend filter let me illustrate this in the next chart here because we don't go for um, several candles movements no we start always at the open of a candle and if you look to that chart here let me mm, illustrate how we go with a pullback grid strategy exactly on my vertical blue line so at what was it <clears throat> 14th of june 2018 for euro japanese yen at midnight the price opened here it's a vertical blue line and that was open of um of the day so we are exactly here at that cross and now what we do is we place orders in this case i uh, virtually um, put only two buy limit orders here but i may even go further in the same sequence in my case the sequence is simply one point when i talk about one point i mean the difference would be between 100 130 and 129 for euro japanese yen so we would always one point below we would put the next order so you see the uh, horizontal green lines and that illustrate those buy limit orders during the day we have um, yeah, 
quite impressive red short candle here. And what you can't see anymore um, is that the price went down um, even below, um, uh, further down than the close of the day. At that day, both buy limit orders would have been uh, filled. So we would have two trades open uh, at the end of the day. What you immediately realize, if you do always the same, maybe at the next day at the open, we, we place once again two buy limit orders or even three or four or five. You can see by your eye that, that those orders would not have been filled. But, so, but that is a principle. At the, when the day starts, we place our orders. All not filled orders will be cancelled at the end of the day. So from MT4 perspective, we would use the, the expire functionality um, so that all not filled orders are automatically cancelled. And um, we repeat the step every day. Every day we do the same. We, we place our orders. When we know the open, then it comes to those buy limit orders in that case. We will later see examples <clears throat> when we do it on the short side, but anyhow, that is the overall principle. You see that what I mean with the grid, and you see that we need a strong remove during the day so that our orders are actually filled. And that we repeat every day. You may ask, hey, what about stop loss? What about tech profit? I explain. So, in principle, many grid strategies work only with take profit. So there, there might be for for those trade sequences. You, you may have. Let's go back to the ducks. It's easier with, just with numbers. Maybe you go with a take profit of uh, 50 points or 200 points or whatever, and they only place the take profit for all the orders, and they do not have a stop loss. If we do long only strategy on ducks, of course you you can think it will be successful because overall the trend goes north, we know. But to have a strategy without a stop loss is in principle not acceptable for me. And therefore I I even wrote down here for us. Nevertheless, there are hundreds of strategies going exactly that way. Meaning they act, they do those rebuys with a grid and they don't have a stop loss. So they increase their position size, increase, increase, increase. And I put it in brackets here, but <clears throat> there's a name or a naming or a phrase for, for those kind of, of uh, trading strategies. And um, they are really called big board strategies. I'm not sure whether everybody knows maybe exactly what really uh, is meant with big boards. Uh, let me explain that way. All um, listening men uh, would know what I mean. And now I think everybody knows. What is meant with that um, the phrase? It meant, it, it simply means you reinvest, you reinvest to the final end. And maybe you need additional money in to your account. <clears throat> and finally, you simply wait until your take profit is hit. That's all. But that's nothing I want to do here because I want to have a stop loss and um, we, how do we do it? What we use is we use a fixed euro value. Or you may trade in other um, accounts like US dollar or I don't know. But so a fixed money amount for the stop loss. And we use a fixed take profit um, in euros or in money as well. So today we are not going like percentage values or what we did or we do not go in, okay, um, stop loss is always 20 bips below my entry. No, we go for a fixed euro value or money value for stop loss and for take profit. And the main point here is we do it regarding less what we have as actual size of our overall position. Overall position, I call those trade 
<clears throat> sequences because let me start with an empty account so with no uh, with no open trade and now we do the first rebuy and maybe we buy one lot of ducks and then we do the second one then we have two uh, lots of ducks and then the third three and so forth and so on and so forth but now the critical point is that our stop loss because I introduce the stop loss as a fixed euro value will come closer and closer to our entries. On the other hand, our average entry price is getting smaller, that decreases, but the stop loss comes nearer and nearer, so closer and closer. And I like it because I want to have a fixed amount of money being on risk and not an unlimited risk. So what we have, if we do it that way, we have a real risk limitation. And that's what we need for professional trading. We cannot assume that later everything will turn out to be good. No, we need a risk limitation and therefore we need a stop loss. And that stop loss will be calculated by the size of our open position and our fixed money value for that stop loss. On the other hand, we do the same with the take profit. So if we um, do our rebuys, for example, then our take profit will come closer to our average entry as well, which is good. Later, you will see <clears throat> that within our Excel sheet, just because of technical limitations that we have in principle for the one candle we, we, we are looking for and we are placing our buy limit orders and sell limit orders, that if those orders are filled, that those will not have a stop loss and not have a take profit in calculation wise. Um, but only until the end of the candle. So let me be practical. It means that for maximum one day, all trades which have which are opened during that day, they do not have a stop loss or a take profit. On the other hand, if price really goes crazy down, then on the next day, of course, um, we uh, will reach our stop loss and um, if nothing really crazy happens. So that's okay. And the, the reason is not because um, I don't want to have stop loss. It has to do with practical limitations of Excel because we can not do uh, several actions um, within one day. So, but that's more more uh, just um, Excel reasons and uh, not trading wise. So from trading, I still use uh, within the day uh, stop loss and take profit. Good. So what do we have in order to develop our strategy? Um, and we will do it in Excel in a minute. We have, when we, we look to our grading pullback strategy, we have um, four, oh, <laughs> that's funny. Um, there's a missing F. We have four, um, four degrees, um, four degrees of freedom. Um, maybe you are not that related to, to, um, to mass, um, then you would call it parameters. Anyhow, uh, what do I mean with those four degrees of freedom? We have, to, um, and those four degrees of freedom, by the way, characterize our trading strategy. So we have a stop loss in euro for a certain trade sequence. We have a take profit in euro or money value um, for our trade sequence. Then we will have an EMA period because let's think about we have that upwards trend. So in this case, our intuition would call uh, would say, hmm, if you have an overall uptrend, why should I place short orders in that trend? And in order to do so, we can use our EMA as a filter. So if price is above, if that open is above the EMA, perfect, then we um, only would go for long trades. And finally, our fourth degree of freedom, yeah, is the distance. Is that, and I will use simply a percentage value for our entries. So um, when I talk about um, DAX, 12,000 points, first buy limit order at um, 
at 11,900, it would be something like 0.9%. So we would place our grid 0.9% stepwise. So those four degrees of freedom characterize our strategy. That's all. And before I go jump into the Excel, let me quickly go back to our um, to our chart, um, our real chart. So this one. So what does it mean? Because I have one uh, additional thing to mention when it comes to that EMA. So we need a uh, moving average. Let's go here. Let's go for this one. Um, and let me check a little bit um, that I then it becomes a little bit more obvious uh, what we are doing here. So I go for a different EMA period. Uh, let me reduce it to 100, uh, it doesn't help. Um, you see, it, it's uh, like a trading directly out of the chart. Um, no, that doesn't help as well. So let me change the underlying, just to make sure that, that it uh, becomes a little bit more obvious uh, what I like to illustrate here. Okay, this one is good. Um, so I concentrate on the last part, and you see why I'm not a fan of um, just looking to charts because you manipulate uh, always uh, EMAs and something and stuff like that in a way that uh, everything fits. You see, we are constantly here below that EMA, and of course it would be good to say only short rates, and that's exactly what I mean. And only at the very end of the chart, we would stop um, placing um, um, by, uh, short uh, sell limit orders. For example, this green candle. Um, no, at this green candle still we are, we are in, in the race because the open of the candle is below. And at the next candle, we would be out of the race because that open is above the EMA. So we would not place our sell limit orders. And then we are back in the race, green one, back in the race, and over the next red one, we would be out of the race because the open of the candle is above the EMA. So that's the filtering process of an EMA. But now we can ask ourselves, okay, that's the intuition. Below EMA, only short trades. Above EMA, only long trades. But maybe it's better to do it vice versa. Maybe. We don't know. We have an intuition about uh, chart technique, but maybe the, the real world is different. So in principle, we should be prepared to do it maybe exactly the other way around. So let's at least be open for that kind of behavior as well, that, that we can do it exactly vice versa. Why not? If it later turns out that our intuition is, is right, good. If not, even better. So then we have everything. But that's what we do with our EMA <clears throat> filtering process, that we only trade one direction for one particular strategy. Why do I call it one particular strategy? Because now, for every underlying, we can look for four different strategies. We can look for a long strategy, so we just investigate our underlying for long trades. In the second step, we would investigate that underlying for short trades. Why not? So we do it independently. And it's good to do so, especially if you go a step further and you, you might go for indices here as well. You know that indices have tendency to go north. So maybe it turn out, will it turn out that short trades <laughs> doesn't make sense. Maybe. Let's see. Um, and so we have long and short trades on the one hand, and we can do it, uh, use the same wording as in previous webinars, we can do it with reversal one or reversal minus one. What do I mean? Yeah, exactly what I sh showed in this chart. Maybe we would say we only trade long if we are below the EMA. So we do it exactly opposite. And that is exactly what I mean with reversal minus one. So it's finally, it means that for a specific underlying, we have in total four possible variants we might investigate. You um, imagine how many trading strategies we will finally have. If we do it for, let's say, 30 underlyings, we have um, 120 uh, potential strategies. Wow. 
that's a huge portfolio. And that's what we are targeting here. So, as I mentioned, we do everything in Excel, no problem. Um, so let me switch to um, illustration wise here. And now um, we have here the Excel sheet for that kind of um, uh, trading strategy. And let me explain a little bit um, what I have prepared. And as I mentioned, you have access to that Excel sheet. Just send me an email and I make sure that you um, get everything. Let me guide you a little bit how the Excel sheet is structured. It's always starting, of course, here with uh, historical data. And you know how to get them. And next point is simply to calculate the EMA. And uh, we can later, we can um, turn those knobs. And with knobs, I simply mean all yellow marked um, um, cells here. So we, right now, we would have an EMA period of 50. And we can change to any other value. <clears throat> the first question within the Excel sheet, and when I say first question, I mean within one row, is I ask the question, hey, do we are, is the open above or below the EMA? And um, as you see in this case, uh, the open is below the EMA based on the close of the previous candle, because that's the definition. We cannot use the EMA value of the same row, because hmm, that's the EMA based on the close of that candle. But at the open, when we do our decision, whether we trade what tra uh, distance for um, <clears throat> those limit orders, we have to decide on the open. Otherwise, we would include already the future in the trading strategy, which is never good. So in this case, we will not place any order. That's characterized by the zero um, here. And of course, we can now change with those green knobs. We can go for short trades only. And of course, then um, that minus one, uh, that zero turns to one. Um, but we will... Um, start with this one and you have maybe already realized that not everything has been reversed when i put a minus one into that cell the reason is the following i introduced our filtering process in a sense that i said okay let's stick with um, long trades we and uh, the, the normal intuitive behavior okay long trades only if we are above ema good but only if there's no trade sequence open if there's already a trade sequence open we place even at the additional days our trades and that's the uh, reason why it's not symmetric here because um, let me switch back to the one so you see there's no trade at the second line there's no possible trade. And um, when I switch to minus one, of course, here at the second place, we have now a plus one. And for all the others as well. Why? Because now we just will see that during the candle, our grid has been activated. So at the next day, we are be, um, on the other side of the EMA. But since we have a trade sequence open, we do further rebuys as well. Okay. So maybe we, you see, if we change EMA period, um, things will change. And maybe we go for uh, another one here for long short. And as you can see already, our, our picture of equity, which is shown here, changes. But let me first start with something which maybe looks a little bit strange. Just uh, let me change the numbers a little bit more random here. Uh, so that we have uh, something like a very crazy start uh, start position. Okay, so we have a close distance for uh, our grid distance, and that is calculated here. And then the next step is we ask, is that grid activated? And if so, how many? You see later here already a two. What does it mean? Yeah, exactly like my previous chart picture. There has been two orders being activated within one candle. And that's already illustrated here. And then what we do practically, we 
we do those buys always stepwise with 0.01 lot. So that is uh, uh, the fundamental logic within that Excel sheet. We open our trades always with 0.01 lot. If we fill two orders within one candle, of course, and it's a 0.02 finally. Okay, so what degrees of freedom we do we have else here? So we have the stop loss value in euro, we have uh, the take profit value in euro, and there's one additional thing we need in order to do all the calculations right. We need the exchange rate. In this case, it would be even more easy because we, we are looking for euro US dollar, um, then we could take the price itself here as being the exchange rate. But later we will um, go for, for example, Australian dollar, Canadian dollar. If we invest, investigate that underlying, okay, then we need an ex the exchange rate for euro Canadian dollar in, do, in order to do all calculations right. There is Honestly, one limitation. Normally, we should use two data sources for our prices, but let's let's not do it too much, too complicated. Last point to mention here within the Excel sheet: you may wonder because of commission of twelve euro. That's really a tough value. Um, why do I do so? Because I know that at GFD we have um, a commission of, of five point five euro. Um, and why do I choose 12? Simple reason. Within this Excel sheet, we don't consider the spread individually. And in order to nevertheless do something which represents spread, I simply increase the commission, which is valid. Uh, and even a, a value of nine euros would be presented um, correctly because typically we have a spread of 0.2 or 0.3 bips and we have a commission of about 6 euro and that adds up to 8 to 9 euros per lot. Let's make it easy and be on the safe side. Um, therefore, I will go here for an even higher commission. But now back to our equity. What we are looking for is we have an EMA, no reversal. We go for a long only strategy, long trades only. And you see crazy equity line. That represents the sum of all trades which have been executed. And honestly, it doesn't look that good. Um, but now let's first study the example of what I mentioned being big ball. So let me increase um, stop loss. You see what happens? Equity is perfect. As always, if you accept stop losses like that. So you see, in general, we can turn the strategy immediately into a perfect profitable strategy. What we are doing here is, of course, we are only looking to closed trades. So um, MT4 wise, it would just be the balance and not the equity. But anyhow, finally, the trades are closed and yeah, that's our equity. That looks great. But you see what we need, and I have no idea um, how far I have to go down. Okay, that was not enough. Um, let, let's try with 15, already 15,000 euro would be enough. Uh, and then we would never been hit by the stop loss. So everything is calculated within the Excel sheet, and I think you will realize uh, how everything runs here. So, but now let's fine tune this strategy again a little bit. So um, let's go for 500 euro stop loss. Then you see we are finally not really profitable. And by the way, uh, what I do here is I simply calculate the slope of the equity and now it's already minus, meaning we are constantly, or well, in average, we are losing money. So what might we do? Maybe it's better to, to increase the grid distance, which means we are not that heavily doing our rebuys. Let's increase to 0.7, for example. And you see, hmm, a little bit better maybe. Let me increase it further. And hmm, critically, um, let's go for 1.5. Oh, constantly going down. OK, now let's change the EMA. Uh, maybe to that value. Looks a little bit better. So we may need 
higher stop loss values but not to that extent maybe even going to the double value like this one and now okay we have something let's check um take profit as well mm, it's getting worse so um let's go for this way you see we have our four degrees of freedom and we can do our optimization process for our strategy and when we finally are done we might even say okay let's look for a short strategy for the same oh looks good as well that's not always but in this case um it works and it works even better but anyhow um it's not that straightforward to find the right parameters so what we are doing finally is simply we are using a trick and the trick is um we do it that kind of optimization process direct in the standard um, excel because the standard excel uh, has so-called solver and what uh, that means is the following so you see here just another example like australian dollar new zealand dollar and you might already realize hey that equity looks better than the um, previous one you're right it turned out that for that kind of strategy, once again, those underlyings which um, don't have very good trend phases um, um, are much better suited for that kind of trading strategy than, for example, those with um, Japanese yen, for example. But back to the solver, what we are doing uh, in order to get the best equity and uh, the optimization process, we just uh, go for the cell which uh, should be optimized. And then we use that kind of Excel solver mechanism. And uh, that means we identify, oh, I have to switch the screen. We have to identify what we want to optimize. In this case, the slope, okay, then slopes should be um, higher, higher and highest so it should be a maximum value and then we say which kind of cells we want to to um, uh, to be changed uh, and then we simply click the button sometimes it uh, needs a couple of minutes and until we are done and then we get our optimization process done automatically great and you see that doesn't look that bad and we can do now the same for the other one. So uh, that is a short trades for um, Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar with a pullback strategy. And now we can have a look for long trades as well. Okay, looks good as well. And now let's change the underlying uh, once again, Australian dollar, Canadian dollar. And here, okay, still mm, we have two... Um, uh, drawbacks here within our equity but nevertheless um, if you do it for a couple of underlyings um, it turned out that we get an enormous portfolio of strategies which we can trade that's brilliant let's have a look of what we can achieve if we are doing this for really um, lots of, of uh, underlyings what we can achieve is an overall portfolio and those results i want to share with you here as well um, let's first start with the equity which we finally get if we do a strategy with that kind of technique that's a combination of um, several ten uh, sub strategies of um, different underlyings and we don't need any more that high stop loss values uh, like uh, shown in the excel and what I have done here is even going for that walk forward methodology. Um, let me remind you what that means. We do an optimization, for example, for data of 2004 until 2006. And then we do that kind of optimization process and we apply them in the following year. And that's all. That's walk forward methodology. So we do optimization process applying in the future. And then all the future trades are um, summed up and that is this kind of equity and still it looks quite promising overall unfortunately i don't have 
um, a calculation which uh, I call simply brute force for all, for the complete period of time. So you have to do something by your own, just um, filling those Excel sheets and finding the, um, the best parameters for the optimization process. But finally, you will get something similar to this one here that I have done it with work for methodology is for me personally simply a confirmation that it really works and it works quite brilliant uh, as you can see here. Let me show you how that works um, specifically. So um, what does it mean if um, for the parameters we get? Um, oh no, that's not this one. <clears throat> it's this one here. So right now, as we speak, the current parameters I use for that <clears throat> strategy are the following within the table here. Let me enlarge it. <clears throat> so you, said, you can see we have targets for those trades um, ranging yeah, a couple of 10 euros. Stop loss values for those trade sequences are in the range of 100, maybe 200 um, euros. And you see <clears throat> the buy limits um, um, in a distance of uh, maybe half a percent um, uh, away. So there's one line with really strange numbers, means um, you see there's no optimum found. Uh, so we skip that underlying and we will not trade that one. Maybe later, uh, a couple of months later, it will turn out that we can restart trading here as well. But right now, trading on that specific underlying is stopped. But as you can see, out of the 35 um, different sub-strategies, uh, it's only one where this trading is right now actually stopped. So those are the actual parameters. If you like, um, if you want to do something similar, uh, you can use those. As I mentioned, you can have access to that Excel sheet, but, not but, sorry, wrong wording. Let's go one step further. We can do even better. And you may already um, imagine what I mean because of my yellow marked um, cells. So if you go for that kind of portfolio, we can do additional steps. I can just simply call them variants here. Since we have quite impressive, big universe of Forex pairs, why not do one additional filter process? And that filter process is simply, oh, let's only go for those with positive swaps. Why not? That's it. So it will reduce our trading activity, but since we may go for trends which last several days, okay, Let's only trade those which have positive swaps. That means when the next day starts, we get something on our account and we do not have to pay. And that's brilliant as well. So we simply reduce our trading activities because we are reducing the number of underlyings to those which have been yellow marked in the previous Excel sheet. But still, we have lots of underlyings and we earn those positive swaps as well. That's good. So that's variant one. And the other where variant we can use is that, for example, if you go for indices, um, why not limit our trading activities to long trades only? Since we know, as far as the stock trading, overall it goes north, why entering short trades? We can still have lots of underlines um, and why not going long only because we know that we have a fundamental bias for indices going north let me show you the results of that um, in a real trading account and that means no not this one here we have to jump here and then we have to jump here and now we go for that trading account so what we are doing here is trading exactly that kind of grid strategy, long only, filtered by an EMA. And 
without going into all the details, what you can see right now, there has been a long sequence of trades for um, the, the, the index of Hong Kong. But actually, we don't have any buy limit order. On the other hand, what you see is you see those grids of orders being active, but none of them is activated um, during the day. In overall, we have only open trades with um, UK, uh, the UK index and with the uh, Nikkei index. And that it, as, um, that's how it looks as we speak. But let's look for the equity as well. So um, because that account is already running since, let me look, um, running since, 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 here we are, since November last year. So it's quite a long time already um, that this one is up and running. And let's uh, go for um, a detailed statement, meaning uh, simply that we create an equity curve of that life account. So that is those 10 indices um, being traded in that uh, life account. And uh, yeah, since I'm running uh, the strategy on a server, it takes a while until we get uh, the result, but it will pop up um, hopefully in less than a minute, only in a second. And here we are, we have all the trades of that account, but I only want uh, to have a look here on the equity and it looks like this. It's quite impressive. We have already um, close to 10% um, earned with that kind of strategy. Of course, we have those drawbacks within our equity and we have an even more pronounced one here and that was exactly the mentioned <clears throat> trade sequence on um, the index of Hong Kong. But anyhow, looks good. So it's really good to have that overall bias um, within that strategy. And that bias is simply the long bias. So it's worse to go for additional bias and to go for indices long only to the one end. And the other possibility just to select further down all the pairs um, and go only for those with positive swaps. Since I realize that a couple of people are coming right now into the webinar, I hope that um, you know that the webinar starts already at 7 p.m. Um, German time. Um, anyhow, let me um, say two things as we speak right now. The, the recording will be uh, on the JFD YouTube channel, so you can listen to the beginning of the webinar if you want um, from tomorrow onwards on the JFD YouTube channel, and that's exactly the keywords you have to press at Google. And you can already download the slides um, in the GoToWebinar control panel. And if you want to have the Excel sheets, which creates exactly those kind of strategies, you just send me an email and you will see on uh, the next slide, my email address once again. Okay, so those sub variants like here, swap positive only and um, indices um, long only are quite good and already shown in a live account. So finally, because I'm now at summary, so um, for those who just jumped into the webinar, in a nutshell, we have seen pullback strategies. They are quite useful. And we know how to do uh, that kind of trading activities in, by those limit orders on the sell and on the buy side. We use an EMA as a trend filter for that so that we distinguish in which direction we want to trade. The most important thing for me personally for those kind of strategy is that we use a stop loss. And that means we tame that kind of strategy. Otherwise, we end up with what I call the big ball strategy, and that's not the one I don't think is professional. We can improve further by our variance. So we go for only for the positive swap uh, forex pairs, and we go for indices long only, and that is further improvement of that kind of trading approach. 
So if you want to have those Excel sheets, as I mentioned here, now, once again, my email address so that I can send you uh, those Excel sheets. Yeah, that's already for today, but I can already announce uh, how it goes uh, further on. And um, in, in August, because exactly today I, I put everything together. So next time we do once again a little bit about how do you are to derive a trading um, strategy from a more statistical point of view. That will be really interesting. We will talk about throwing coins. That doesn't sound like a trading strategy, but you will see that we use that kind of technique or comparison, better to say, in order to derive some specific deviations um, when it comes to real stock prices or real forex prices. And the other one that is even more surprise, hopefully, um, for everybody, I will show you how to follow all the strategies we develop within those webinars, webinars quite easily. But that's still a little bit of a secret, and that will be at the end of August. But you would definitely see already email announcement before, um, and that will be a good step further. Um, I can promise already. So that's for now. Um, hopefully you enjoy it once again and um, I hope that you will be around uh, for the next ones as well. So it will be middle of um, August and end of August. So I think the first one is in three weeks and the other one then in five weeks. Uh, but during the next couple of days you will get that kind of announcement or you will find those webinars on the uh, research page of um, the JFT Brokers. That's for now. Enjoy the evening. I assume it's hot uh, at your place as well. In Germany, it's uh, still, I don't know, around 30 degrees. Um, yeah, that's now. So I can only say goodbye for uh, today. Enjoy your time. Bye.